It's time for Orchard Skills. OpenID Connect has become the leading standard for single sign-on and identity provision on the internet. Its formula for success is simple JSON-based identity tokens. JWT delivered via OAuth 2.0. Flows designed for web browser-based applications. Today on Orchard Skills, we'll be configuring an Orchard Core OpenID Connect server and using a Blazor WebAssembly application to receive the user's identity encoded in a secure JSON web token, JWT, called an ID token. So with this authorization, we can receive a blog post through a REST API call. Please stay with us and we'll get started. Welcome back. In previous videos, we called a REST API GraphQL through a Blazor WebAssembly application that allowed anonymous access, allowing anyone knowing the API endpoint to access our content. Today, we are taking security seriously. Our Blazor WebAssembly application with access to a client ID and client secret can request a JSON web token, JWT for short. This JWT is then used as a bearer token when calling the REST API GraphQL endpoint. Instead of starting out from scratch, let's clone the GitHub repository on a previous video, rendering an Orchard Core Markdown blog post with Blazor Assembly. I have placed a link in the video description. With your favorite browser, let's browse to github.com slash Orchard Skills slash Orchard Skills dot Orchard Core Blazor Markdown. Let's click on the green code button and select open with GitHub desktop. Click on open GitHub desktop.exe. Click on the clone button. And there we go. We got the GitHub repository cloned. Let's launch Visual Studio. Click on the HTTP request tester.razor component. In order to retrieve our bearer token, we're going to need another URI link to the OpenID Connect authorization endpoint. We will also need a text edit box for the client ID and client secret. We will also need another button to request the token. Once the button is pressed, it would be nice to show the request body and also display the request response containing the bearer token. Let's make the changes and then talk about what I did. Okay, so here we have a row of two columns, one with the method and one with the URI, and this will be for the, the token endpoint. So we'll have a get, post, put, and delete drop down, and then we'll have an edit box for the URI token. Next, we'll have another row with the client ID and the client secret. And then for the input type, we're gonna make it a password just to put more security on it. And then down here, we'll have our button, which will be get token, and then we'll have a, a method called get token later down and then once they press the get token and the response has a value then we'll go ahead and display the request body and then also the request status code and the response body as well and then also we'll do the response headers tokens as well and then for the graph QL section will have the same. We'll have a pull down method for get, post, put, delete. Then we'll have a URI edit box for the URL. And then we'll have a section for the, the request body. And then we'll have a section for header entries for the name and the value. And then we'll have a, a remove button. So this is exactly what we had before. And then here, when we get a response generated, then we'll display the response status code. We'll display also the response body. And then also also the headers as well. So down here, we're going to have a string of URI token, method token, which is post. Our UI token is to slash connect slash token. URI GraphQL is at API slash GraphQL. Then we'll have our client ID and secret ID. We'll fill those in just for demonstration purposes only. We wouldn't do that in real life. For ease of use, then we'll just do that for now. And then we'll initialize our request body token to blank. And then and this is the request body GraphQL query. And then we'll set up our content type for application slash WW form URL encoded. And then we'll also add our authorization here for the bear token. So we'll pre-populate this for ease of use as well. And then down here, when we press on the button get token, it'll call this get token method here. And we'll generate the request body token, which will be the client ID equals the actual client ID 
and the client secret equals the client secret, and then grant type is equal client underscore credentials. Then we'll go through each of the response headers and populate that, and then we'll go ahead and generate the response, and then get the response headers token and populate that. And then on the do request, it's exactly the same as before. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a try. Okay, let's go up here and click on the green little triangle button. Okay, we're at the Orchard Core setup page. Let's go ahead and enter our site name. Let's go ahead and select the blog recipe. Use SQLite for a database. Let's enter our username, email, and our credentials, and hit the finish setup button. Okay, great. You can see our new call web API page. And so you can see here that we have a URI for the connect slash token. We have a client ID section and we have a client secret section. And then we have a get token button and the rest is the same. So let's go ahead and go to the admin dashboard, enter our credentials and hit the blue login button. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is go to configuration and to features and let's enable our GraphQL. So let's enable that. And now let's search for OpenID Connect. And we want to enable the server, client, components, and the validation. And let's do bulk enable. All right, all of those are enabled. So now we wanna go back to our security and go into our roles. And let's create a new role. We'll call it API. It will be the GraphQL API. Create that. Let's go ahead and edit that. And let's search for GraphQL. And let's enable execute GraphQL for this. Hit save. And now let's go to the OpenID Connect. Okay, go into management and then applications. And let's add an application. And so let's go ahead and enter our, our client ID in. Our display name, we'll put, we'll put API GraphQL. And we'll do a confidential client. Let's enter in our secret. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Let's go into settings and then go into authorization server and allow client credentials flow. And click on update the server settings and reload the tenant. We want to click on allow client credential flow and then we want to click on API and hit save. Okay, let's go back to our application and let's see if our get token works. So let's click on get token and there you go, we got our token. So we displayed our request body, which is client ID equals our client ID and our client secret is equal to our client secret. And then grant type is equal to client credentials. And here's our actual bearer token here. And here's our headers. So now let's go ahead and click on send to get our blog post and see if that works. And there you go, we got our blog post. To recap, we cloned a previous video's GitHub repository rendering an Orchard Core markup blog post with Blazor WebAssembly. We modified the HTTP request transfer Razor component. We added an additional API method and URI. We also added a client ID and client secret for the ID connect endpoint to get the token. We added a section for the token request body, response status, body, and headers. We clicked on the get token button and retrieved our bearer token. And finally, with our bearer token, we clicked on the submit button and retrieved our blog post. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.